In Brooklyn, New York, lies the historic neighborhood of Cobble Hill, a hip, thriving area and home to Sal's Pizzeria, run by John Esposito. My parents came here from Italy, and they took over this pizzeria in 1970. And at the age of 14, I left high school to help my mom and dad run the business. This has become my life ever since. Hello, Sal, how can I help you? We ran the place very successfully. Thank you. By the 90s, we were able to purchase the restaurant next door. Hello, how are we doing? Welcome to Maria's. Thank you. My mom became sick. She got diagnosed with cancer. And we thought the right thing to do was to name the room after my mom. That's why you have Sal's Pizza and Mama Maria's. His father passed away, his mom passed away. He was the only one in charge of everything. And as the years passed, it started to go down. We don't have that kind of volume of sales that we once had, Then I can't figure out the reason why it dropped off. Where's the people? I've stayed the same. I haven't changed. They weren't a fan of the eggplant. I don't know what they're doing over there. John, as the owner, is supposed to be in charge of this whole place, including the kitchen. But he's usually up front making pizzas covered in, in flour. It's a nightmare, right? It is a fucking nightmare. The pizzeria and a restaurant are two different animals. That's like the accountant that thought it'd be cool to open a wine bar. Stop paying attention over here for a minute. Get in the kitchen. Really look at what's going on. John treats this place like his second home. He's got four kids that are always here running around the restaurant. It doesn't really look good for the restaurant. John is an extremely stubborn owner. All right, so this is the way we're going to set up the table. Listen, Paul Maria Rosa, tell him to get down here. It's my restaurant. In his mind, the system has worked, but it really stopped working like 20 years ago. Cobble Hill used to be a very old school Italian neighborhood, but now we have much, much younger people moving in. Uh, a lot of people like to call them hipsters. Hey, sorry, uh, spaghetti doesn't taste quite right. I don't know what to tell you. It's a fresh tomato sauce. Throw this up. Am I going to put on plastic glasses, get a funky haircut, put an earring in my ear just to accommodate the new people? I'm not going to do that. How are things on this side? Not bad. Horrible. Really? Yeah. John is holding on to the past and to the way things were done when his parents ran the business. We didn't do anything tonight. We didn't even do a quarter of what we used to do. Any businessman would have said, enough is enough, pull the plug. But how do you pull the plug on family history? Pretty tough. Yeah. We gotta do something to boost these checks. This place, it's mom and dad. Losing one is like losing a parent again. They're not prepared to handle that. Mama Maria's. What is that? That is ghastly. Holes everywhere. That is not a good sign. Damn. My goodness me. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? First name is? Fabio. Yeah, good to see you. I'm the manager here. That outside looks like an eyesore. Whose idea was that? The owner, he actually cut the letters out. Why? I guess because it was tearing and he just completed the whole thing. And the owner is? John. And he is where? Next door. He's responsible for, like, the pizzeria. So, two restaurants? Right. Mama Maria's I'm standing in. Right, and then there's Charles Pizzeria next door. Um, Right, I'm going to go meet the owner. Okay. Uh, thank you. No problem. Wow. So, Sal's Pizzeria. John? There he's there. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. Excellent. So, are you filling in today? Someone phoning sick? N I pretty Peter much make, is make he sick? the pizzas. Yeah, I always work the front of the counter. Oh, so you're pizzas. behind there constant? Yeah. Wow, how long have you been making pizzas? Since I'm um, 10 years old. That's incredible. I got confused with that. Hideous canopy outside. Was that you who cut holes in the canopy? Uh, actually, the wind did that. The wind did that? Yeah. Anyway, come round. Let's have a, a catch up. OK, first of all, give me a little insight, the history. My mom and dad had a pizzeria, and my father and my mother did all the cooking in the back. Sure. By the 90s, my mom got sick. She came down with cancer. She passed first. I'm sorry, he's no longer with me. Wow. So that's why it has two different right. names. Mom and dad, Sal and Maria. Right. Combined restaurants, what is the number one problem here? We're not busy. You're not busy? Uh, there's more competition in the neighborhood, and uh, we're struggling. We're struggling to keep the doors open. It's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I'd like to 
things and find out what's going on here. It's very uncomfortable for me to sit here right now and ask for help. Thank you. I'm not feeling who I am. I feel weak. Oh, hello. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? And this is? Laurie. Laurie, nice to see nice you. Nice to meet you. What do you do? I'm a waitress. Excellent. What's wrong with the rest of Um, lack of leadership. Uh, John's a little frantic, chaotic, um, usually very busy in the pizzeria. John has been here forever. So you would think John would know how to run this place, but he doesn't want to change anything because this is what his parents knew before they passed away. Homemade pastas. Pasta made daily on the premises. All the pastas made fresh on a daily basis? Yep. OK, um, start off with the tortellini patata. OK. I've got to try the spaghetti meatballs. Spaghetti meatballs. Margarita, please. OK. Thank you. Wow. Mangalea Reganata, second course. You got the tortellini patate. The food is not good here, but it's not my food. I'm serving it the same way we always serve it. Oh, boy. I think the chef Ramsey's going to have a heart attack when he sees what goes on around here. Oh, my god. Oh, hello. Hi, how are you? I'm very healthy. How are you? Good. I'm Fran. I'm Fran, nice to see you, darling. What'd you do? I oh, just showed the desserts to oh, the okay. table. Oh, OK. Let's have a look. Show oh. me. Wow. So they showcase the desserts. Mmm. So this is our desserts. Everything's made here fresh on premise. Right. So, jeez. Uh, what is that? It's butter. It's, oh, it's butter? Yeah, just to display Ooh. as the ice cream. And that, uh, that mold on there, can you show that? No, the butter's on top, so it covers that. And that bit there? Yeah. And Fabio, you're the general manager, right? So you've got no idea of this. We're presenting those moldy bits of shit, and it's stuck with butter on top. Now, That's those what? are just for a display. Hold on, they're hold on. For... Because they're for display, you've got the right to cake them in mold and serve customers a display that's full of mold. So are we supposed to, like, put a fresh one every day so we can throw it out? Are you kidding me? What do you think? I think that, you know, as long as it's... I mean, it's fresh, it's good. I mean, are but you... I wouldn't... But I wouldn't... Are you... I mean, have you lost the plot? No, I haven't. No. It's changed colours four times, and it absolutely reeks. All I'm saying is that this is for display. We're not serving it. So do the customers deserve a display that's full of shit? Oh, my God, he's ripping into him. He's ripping into him, man. Look at this mess. Oh, my God. That, it must be two months old. It's probably a few days old. A few days? Uh, we don't serve it. It's for presentation. I'm aware you're not serving it. Thank fuck, Gold Star. Congratulations on that one. That's, uh, that's a big breakthrough with you. That's why you're here. Excuse me? That's why you're here. I'm here to tell you that that's shit, and you no. shouldn't be presenting it. No, you don't know the difference between mold and fresh? It's for presentation only. Give me two seconds. I need to clean my hands. I'm caked in mold. I've got disgusting butter, and I've got fucking hands full of pus. Oh, my God. Christ almighty. You got Tylenol or codeine? No. <laughs> He's gonna come throw it at us. I'd rather him throw it at us than me serve it to him. The patata? Thank you. You're welcome. I don't know. It's bland. I mean, really bland. And visually, it looks like someone's just eating that whole dessert tray and it shot out twice as quick as it went in. Laurie, it's just bland. I mean, really bland. I'll let them know. And this is frozen because there's a grainy potato flavor inside that... I don't think anything's frozen here. Yeah, so the tortellini aren't frozen. I'll double check. Thank you, though. Uh-oh. He said it was very, very bland. He asked if the, um, the tortellini were frozen. I wasn't sure if they were frozen or not. He's right. Well, pasta's fresh frozen. That's the most mind-boggling thing in this place. We make everything and then freeze it. Chef, the Twitter leadies are frozen. Oh, they are frozen? They are. So you advertise you're making it daily, but you freeze it daily. Something's wrong big time. Thank you, though. Wow. They said the Twitter is frozen. I, I, I can't... I didn't even know this shit. Me either. I thought everything was, like, fresh. It makes no sense. What, to make it fresh and then freeze it? And then freeze it. It makes no sense. Does anyone clean here? Fabio, how often is this place cleaned? I have no idea. You've got no idea when this place was last cleaned? They don't have a cleaning crew. And all these? I'm not sure I'll have to ask John. What's that smell in here? <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> That's the smell. 
Oh, my God. What in the fuck? Damn. There was a little bit of a payback, because he just finished tearing me apart. I thought that was a little bit of karma. Did I get you? Yeah. Where in the fuck did all that come from? You all flooded it. Who watered the plants this morning? John, yeah. they're full of water. Somebody watered the plants. Someone's doing a great job at watering plants, but not changing desserts. Man! Wow. Now I'll pay for any dry cleaning, right? OK? Fuck me. The spaghetti and meatballs. I would say enjoy, but I know better. Spaghetti and meatballs? Spaghetti and meatballs. Um, fresh meatballs or frozen? Frozen. Oh, come on. Everything is frozen. Look at that now inside, how rubbery it looks, even before tasting it. Man, look at that, how dry that is. Dry, disgusting, frozen meatballs. Uh oh. Meatballs are frozen, rubbery, and dry. He's right. OK. Every product we use in here is frozen. When I first started here, we cut up a leg of veal, and I'm still waiting to use it. And here's your pizza. For a margarita pizza, it's very greasy. Yeah, I've got oil slicks in here. Doesn't like the pizza either. It's too greasy. That's just full of grease. Laurie, the pizza's grease is anything. But what concerns me, John's behind the bar, all this shit food's coming out, and I want him to taste what he's sending me, because I'm a little bit miffed to why I'm here, if no one's caring. OK. Please? Sure. Wow. He said the pizza is greasy, and that you should be tasting everything that before it gets sent out to him. Bullshit. I've had enough. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. I know. I've had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough. After being disappointed by bland frozen food and greasy pizza at Brooklyn's Mama Maria's, a joke. Chef Ramsay heads to the kitchen looking for an explanation. I don't want to talk to this guy when he comes in here. Come on, everybody outside. Uh, introduce me to who's who. This is Joel. Joel. This is Oscar. Joel. How are you? Hi, how are you? Come through. Valentino. Hello, sir. Valentino, how are you? Good to meet you. Likewise, good to see you too. Um, I don't know where to start. I've just had one of the most disgusting lunches I've ever had. I stopped a dessert tray full of mouldy desserts and the tortellini, grainy, bland, and the potato was just dreadful. The meatballs, frozen. Dry, solid? Yes, they're disgusting. I don't eat them. But you can't make meatballs every day. You get 20 pounds of chopped meat, you make the meatballs, and you freeze the rest. Do you know how long it takes to make five pounds of meatballs? 10 minutes. It's what we've done all our lifetime. I haven't just started this yesterday. The meatballs are always done. If you should get away with it, 1967. It's 2012, John. Does anyone have standards here? We're not in control of the menu. Whose menu is this? This is my menu. Well, I'm embarrassed to do some of the things that we do here. Are you kidding me? We make pasta fresh and we freeze it. Like, are you crazy? But why are you doing it? I don't have a choice. Who's stopping you? The menu. My menu. Why don't you listen to this man? He's spoken more sense in the last five minutes than anybody has since I've been here. Do you listen to your staff? They're not paying my bills. I'm the guy paying the bills. Oh, because you make the pizza, and so they can't have a voice. You should be nowhere near this business. I don't agree with you. I think we should close the doors. I don't think this man actually gives a shit. I didn't, I didn't call you can, can because I, I want to put the key to the door. I, if I need you to tell me to put the key to the door, sure. I would have done that without you okay. coming in. It worked before. Why can't it work now? But you're running on nostalgia. It stood still. And yet, outside these four walls, the whole neighborhood has overtaken you. You're in love with the memories, John. I don't know what to say. Thank you for your honesty. I need a shower. I fucking stink of plant juice. I'm not going to close the doors just because he said he said so. I don't agree with him. 100% game on, all right?
Within a short time of his arrival, Chef Ramsay has discovered that the staff may actually know more than the owner. What are we supposed to do? So we didn't fucking make these recipes. And now he's eager to see how the team functions in a dinner service. Oh my god. Yeah. Hello, how are we doing? Welcome to Maria's. Thank you. Second course, Papa Del tomato sauce. Our boxes, pizza boxes, grande before, rapido. What's going on down here? Hello. Business running as normal, John. Yes, this is. Yeah. If I wasn't here, you'd be doing exactly the same. Exactly the same. No difference. You're gonna leave. Give me that portobello clam. I need that first. So that's what John would normally do, just all night on the pizzas out there. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't come in here. He just stays out there all night. He's afraid. I think he's afraid of the kitchen. He's afraid of the I kitchen. I think so, sir. He owns the place. I know. It's crazy. Well, I mean, it's insane. As John seems content to pound away at the pizza oven. Margarita sauce, margarita. The kitchen, led by Joe, is pushing out food at a steady pace. Pick it up. Here is your pasta. But that doesn't mean the fast arriving food is pleasing the customers. How's everything? Um, the shells are like frozen. Okay. It looked like it's freezer burned. All I got was rosemary. All I taste is rosemary. I don't taste any of the sauce. Here. I found a bone in my sauce. What's that? A bone. I'm a vegetarian. Inside the sauce. Joe, two seconds. There's a bone in a rigatini. This is vegetarian. And the tomato sauce, they put pork bones in it. What the fuck? She's vegetarian. That's how we do it every day. John is responsible for the methods that we use to produce the food. Get me John, urgently. He says, if you don't like it, leave. John, this, this is urgent now. A lady had just found a pork bone. In the rigatini. We use to give the sauce over, we always always added sausage. So sauce. you're serving pork bones in the sauce to a vegetarian. Oh Jesus Christ. That's how we prepare food for the last 40 years, and I don't see that being a problem. A pork sauce to a fucking vegetarian? It's the way we've always done our business. But you can't serve a vegetarian a pork sauce. What the fuck is going on here? I don't know what, what... I had fucking enough. I had enough. I had fucking enough. Do you want me to order you a coffee? Will that make it better? Are you OK? Because I can't hear you. Are you waiting for the uh, bathroom, honey? No, um, my friend got sick. Is he vegetarian? No. No. What did he have? The lobster tail. Okay. And the lobster, he said, tasted um, funny. And next thing I knew, he was sick. Uh, John, you know what you said? Yeah. The gentleman being sick in the bathroom. Yeah, he had lobster, I had the mushroom, and then. Would you like a medical assistance? Would you like for me to call 911? Joe, pass me a lobster tail, please. I need one lobster tail. It's tough, right? Why are you guys throwing up? He's in the bathroom mm -hmm. and he's sick. Please show me exactly what you serve that customer. Yeah, please, thank you. Fucking hell. You all right? OK. Go. Chef, your lobster's ready. Thank you. John, come here, you. Just smell it. Seriously, fishy. I can smell the ammonia. Yeah, you smell that? And that's what that man has just eaten. That's so, ammonia. That's what releases it. The body starts to decompose. Yeah. It's been pulled apart and then decomposed. That's what makes it bad. Joe, just clarify something for me. We could possibly kill them. Kill someone. And whilst we're discussing this, and there's a man vomiting in the toilet now. I can't believe this is happening right now. It feels like shit to know that you got somebody sick. And it's the first time you've got your head out the dough. But it's John's responsibility no matter what, because John buys all the product that we use. Yeah, please. Should we call an ambulance? Yeah. It's just not well. Call an ambulance. Hi, this is Sal's Pizzeria. I need an ambulance. The customer's not feeling well. Your face is really flushed. Oh, my god. My worst fear is for anybody to get sick in my restaurant. Where's a shot of something? I need a shot. I need a shot of something. I got a guy vomiting. No, no, give, me, give me something. Give me quick. Vodka, vodka. Somebody came to your house and you cooked them a dinner. 
How would you feel he started puking all over the place? A guy had some lobster, and he has a reaction to it. The gentleman sit down. Oh, my God. We just saw an ambulance come out? Yes. yes oh, my God. God. Oh, my God. Need to kill the cameras. Kill the cameras. It's dinner service at Mama Maria's. You all right? You OK. Go. One of the diners is feeling ill after eating a questionable lobster. It's not. Seriously, it's fishy. And that's what that man has just eaten. And the paramedics have just arrived on the scene. A guy had some lobster, and he has a reaction to it. The gentleman sitting down. It's terrible for anybody to get sick on anything that you serve. You, you, I want to stop everything. Just close the fucking place down now. OK, so whatever's been served has been served. I do not want to serve. I do not want to serve anything else. Joe, shut it down. Come, come. All the fucking vegetarians, now this. I've had it. Just stop. Everybody stop, OK? Nothing else leaves this kitchen unless it's going in a garbage bag. OK, so. When I shut it down, they'll just kick everybody out. Just apologize, out. no check, deeply sorry, and we have a, an issue that I have to deal with. My apologies. OK. We need to close, go to the tables, tell everybody they need to go. No checks, just go. OK, close oh, okay. them. So sorry, but we're going to close the restaurant down, too. So should we not eat this? Yes, don't eat it, just, no, don't eat don't it, just. Eat we're shutting okay. down. We are shutting down, I'm sorry. Am I going to get sick from the appetizer we eat? Is no, that, no, is it that no. Kind of just they're not going to serve anything else. It's embarrassing to have paramedics walk into your restaurant and to have to shut down your restaurant because of that. Should we take his contact information or any kind of information like that? John, can I have a word? Yeah. Outside. <clears throat> John, tonight was beyond a disaster. Oh, I never expected this. Never in my wildest dreams. It's all humiliation. But it's not just bad food, John. It's bad practices that mean you're so detached from your business. You don't look like an owner. You don't sound like an owner. You're like a member of staff back there. Uh, you, you're you right. But why? I don't know why. I don't know why. I Just because I think I've been beat up too much. There's got to be some fight inside. There's got to be some. Listen, I am a fighter. I've been a fighter my entire life. I was thrown into this place because they needed to, they needed a, a, a horse, a donkey to run the place because they couldn't afford to hire people. They sacrificed my education to throw me in here. But you've given up. Come on. You're destroying yourself. Listen. Help me change. I will help you, but you have to understand. You cannot be a member of staff pounding dough. That's not right. You shouldn't be doing that. I do it because I love my family. And I want to provide for them. The best way I know how. Do you think they get enjoyment watching you kill yourself in there? John, come on. You have to take a big, long step back and stop running this place from a fucking pizza oven. No. <clears throat> I, I can't. I mean, no, emotionally, I can't. Why? I need to take a break. No, no, no. Listen, you're an owner. Hey, I can see the pain. I feel it. Let me tell you. I've got four kids of my own, and I know how hard it is. But I'm here for you. And I want you to win. Understand that. Man to man. I'm telling you, I want you to win. But you've got to listen. OK? We can do this, right? You do I want to do it. Good. Have fun We're going to start. Have fun with my okay. kids. Let's do it for them, OK? See you in the morning. Chef Ramsay may have pledged his help to John, but he needs to get a handle on everything before he can implement changes. So early this morning, 
he does a little research. Who is this? Bloody hell. Time to see how much frozen food there really is. Oh, God. This. Bloody hell, fettuccine. Penne. They said they had frozen food, but I certainly wasn't aware there was this much. Oh, my God. This goes on. It's endless. How much pasta's in here? Look at the colours. It's frozen badly. No date, no name. Look at it. Oh, you're kidding me. What is that? Sausage skin. I mean, honestly, look at this. Buckets of them. What's that? That's just out of two freezers. And look, there's more freezers down there. Oh, my God. You are kidding me. Chicken, freezer burnt. Oh, man, look at this. This must be five years old, this stuff. It's ruined. You can't cook that. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. This is a joke. Look at that. Oh, come on. Meatballs. This is ridiculous. They're frozen molded. What's that? Oh, God. There's no labels. Another freezer. Frozen vegetables, frozen pasta. My God. I don't even know what it is. An ice cream container. Some are filled with pasta shells. Look at this stuff. Freezing tiramisu. You are kidding me. Oh, that's egg glass. How many portions of food is here? Well, it's just endless. Horrified by the amount of frozen food. Wow. Chef Ramsay is determined to give John and his staff... Unbelievable. ...a much-needed wake-up call. How are you today? Good. Shit day yesterday. Yeah. I've just spoken to Charles, the diner from last night. He got checked out this morning at the hospital. Totally fine, OK? Big breath of fresh air there, let me tell you. I was yeah, yeah. really uh, nervous. No, we okay? all were. We all were. Today, we start fresh. Fortunately, we are still a little frozen in the past. Come with me. Oh, boy. Let's go. Let me show you something. Come in. Wow. What the fuck is this? That's our menu. What do you think it is? This is our store. John, I've never, ever encountered anything like this in my entire cooking career. Ever. Never. If we had to not touch anything else in this kitchen and cook what we've got, you'd be open for the next 12 months and still not run out. Oh, my God. Wow. Come on. We have 40 stacks. That's like 400 pounds of chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken probably doesn't have that much chicken on hand. John. Do you have any idea that this is going on? Yes. It is. It's, it's amazing when you look at it. But I knew it was going on. Look at the meatballs. Freaking turn color. Hey, don't throw it at me. Come on, guys. There's more, Joe. I know. There's more downstairs. There's more. It, it pains me. You're right. There's no, there's no way around it. This is my, this is my fault. It's a sad truth. It is. It lies with me. This is my fault. I let this get out of out of my grasp. Past glory, we used to do 10 cases of chicken in two weeks. I'm still buying like we were busy at that at that level, and we're not. The restaurant is struggling as it is, but you're losing money twice as fast. Try to change something that's no. Is that true? He's trying to change, you're saying no? Yes. There's resistance to change. Yes. So that's another of my big problem. Yes. Like I told I mean, you. Look at this. How long do you think those have been special? When's this from? I, 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 I listen. I'm just it's asking. Not as, how, how long has that been yeah. here? Since my parents died. I don't want to take it down. No, I, but I don't post the specials. It's just something a memory so to me. But that's the. Really important issue, and you mustn't take this personally. You're still treating this business as if mum and dad are here. We have to let go. Throw it out. It's holding me onto the pants. But throw it out. No, I'm not asking to throw that out. No. Take it home. Take it home. No, John, I don't want to get upset, but you've got to understand. Take you've got to let go of the past. OK? Yep. Guys, get the shit out of here. John, let's go. I am here to help you, but I can just see the
pressure. I can feel no, it's not the me. frustration. I don't, I don't want to be here no more. Not that I don't want to be here. I don't want to be in this position no more. It's just sad. Just being here every day, working seven days a week. I don't know if I told you. I wasn't educated. My mom and dad threw me in here. I would come home from school, not to eat lunch, to serve lunch. How old? I was a kid, eight, 10. And this has been my life ever since. It's just sad to sit here every day, knowing what we used to do, and not be able to do what I used to do anymore. It's just, you're holding on to the wrong things. And I think deep down inside, you're just running scared. I don't want to be scared of I want to fight my wife. I sent my kids to camp. They were so happy that you were coming. My third child said to me, Daddy, Ramsey's going to fix everything. Can we get to spend more time together? Hey, you will. But you have got to let go of the past. It's your turn now. I am here to help you. Do you understand? But it's on one condition. You step away from that pizza day. I want a commitment that you are not going to jump will. behind there on the safety net. It's going to be hard. I just want a commitment from you that you're going to get your head out the dough. Yes, I will. Yes. Yeah? I yes. want to start making it, not pounding it. Uh, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Can you hear what's going on out there? I hear it. I hear That's it. for a reason. I hope they're listening. It's going to be extremely hard not to fall back into your old habits, but I'm ready to, to, from today on, change my ways and move forward and not let that ever happen again. Chef Ramsay clearly feels for this owner and is now ready to reveal the first important change. First of all, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Where are you? We hear you, but I don't see you. Don't worry about that. We are relaunching Mama Maria's. Excited? Yay. Yeah. Good. Remove your blindfolds. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, that awning's gone. That's right. The awning has gone. Let me welcome you to the new sign. Mama Maria's. When I first arrived here, I saw a disgusting awning. Letters cut out, just hideous. This now is your first statement. It says a lot, first impressions. Let me tell you. Oh, yeah. I like it. It looks minor. I've made some minor changes inside. Minor. Trust me, when you walk through those doors, I think you're going to crap yourself. Let's go in. Come in. Please. Oh, wow. Holy crap. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, my god. Oh, this my is totally god. different. First of all, welcome to the new, bright, vibrant Mama Maria's. And my goodness. Does it scream Brooklyn? Oh, wow. Totally different. Oh. When I first came in here, it was resembling a restaurant that hadn't been touched in years. It was dark, it was grimy, and it had no life. We've got stunning turquoise walls that gives that nice, vibrant pop. The custom artwork done by a very talented artist painting the beautiful, historic Brooklyn Bridge above your fireplace. I like that. I think this is what Brooklyn wants and needs. We got rid of all the clutter that John just was holding on to. We have on the wall your parents in full-blown, stunning photographs, which is an amazing memory to hold on to. Oh, have a look at the uh, paper. That's your mom. Oh. <laughs> you didn't see that. No. <laughs> That's me serving the dog. I didn't notice the pictures. Never forget this day moving forward, a new beginning in the history of the stunning family-run Mama Maria's, let me tell you. This is my family. This is me. It was here in front of my eyes. I didn't see it. It's amazing. It's changing from old to new. What I let go of the past, the past is still here with us. And I got a new lease on life. Chef Ramsay's remodel of the restaurant is only part of his master plan. Come through, please. The overhaul of the menu is the real key to turning this Brooklyn eatery around. First of all, just take a look at the vibrancy. Looks great. Fresh. Yeah, that's yeah. what I want too. That's what I need. Right, menu. Starting off with a delicious bruschetta. It's done with a really nice chopped up mozzarella served with marinated tomatoes. Earthy, rustic, and charming. Brilliant and fresh. The mussels are just incredible. A great little appetizer to get the palate with juices flowing. The specialities of the house, the pizzas. Margarita, stunning, simple, delicious. You hit it on the head. Next to that, you've got the ozabuco, served in its cooking juices over mashed potato, gremolata, and a really nice, rich demi glace. I'm hungry. <laughs> You're hungry. That's a great sign. <laughs> Boss, John, what do you think? I'm excited. I'm You're excited? Yep. 
Here's the scenario. We have some very, very influential journalists and bloggers coming in, everybody on their game. Yes, sir. One more thing, these little sprucing up. Got this for you especially. Nice. Hey. Beautiful <laughs> shirt. After 40 years, I'm going to take my colours off. That's right, because you're no longer a pizza boy. You are the owner. If I catch your head inside that pizza oven, I'll put it in permanently. <laughs> <laughs> and as I look at you now, right over your shoulder, I see your father looking down. Look at him. Look. That's right. And you are going to run this business just like they did when they brought you into this world. You got it. It's relaunch night. We've got some big hitters in tonight, yeah. And Chef Ramsay is determined to let everyone know that Mama Maria's is the new cool place to dine in Brooklyn. First off, Eat in Brooklyn, blogging website, dynamic. Blackboard Eats, blog. Great. Awesome. Right. We're going to impress them. Eat to blog are also joining us, followed by the New York Observer. Big one. Absolutely big one. Getting nervous. You have got a powerhouse full of critics. Look how smart you are. Wow. Turn around, give us a spin. Whee! Amazing, amazing, amazing. Let's go. Welcome to Mama Maria's. This is our brand new menu. Welcome to Mama Maria's, our relaunch, and I'm very proud of what we're doing now. That two doctors come here, just recognize them. New York Observer, the guy with the notepad. Oh, okay. He's the man. 2.4 million readers. Don't tell me who they are, because I'll get nervous. No, I've just told you. You need to know who they are. Let's go. You can do it. It's tough taking on this new role. You know, it's not my makeup. I'll grab them. Okay. Two? Yeah. Right. I need to step away from that pizza counter and be more hands-on to make sure everybody's doing their job and doing it correctly. Table four, New York Observer. Yes. OK. OK, listen up. First course, minestrone and a Caesar. You got it. I need this risotto cavatelli, please. 30 seconds in the window. Good. While John may be in the unfamiliar role of leading his staff. How we're doing over here is the pizza's all done. There's another one coming. Mama Maria is off to a good start. Pick up lasagna, gnocchi, spaghetti, meatballs. And customers are thoroughly enjoying the food. The gnocchi's delicious. I think the sauce is spot on delicious. But while Chef Joe continues to push dishes out in a timely manner. Muscles in the window, bruschetta in the window, let's go. It was a typical southern Italian red sauce joint, yeah. John seems to have forgotten that he is still needed in his new role as leader. I'm so hungry. Yeah, I'm really hungry for it, too. Table four in the window, let's go. It's a vlogger's table, guys. Let's go, rapido. It's very frustrating when I see dishes not leaving the window. There's no time for mistakes. I ain't got time for this. Where is John? Let's go. Give me John. Let me get him. Are you serious right now? Son of a bitch. There's a guy walking around here with a white jacket, blonde hair. Oh, for fuck's sake. John. Yes, sir. So you can't just favor two guys at the bar. You've got to be everywhere. Right, right. In and out. We're yeah. in the middle of service. I'm not letting you sink the dining room. No. This place no. is full of some of the most influential, I, I, influential I, I, bloggers. I hear you. Step up. Period. That's right, End of story. That's right. We have to encourage. Don't stop. You cannot stop. We're going to communicate with our team. Still got VIP tables out there. OK, the stuff is right I'll take it out them. I'll take it out OK, them. beautiful. Let's not drop our heads. Let's bounce back, OK? Here you go, guys. Thank you. Oh, I'm so happy. Sorry about this service. We're trying our best. We're trying to keep up, and we're trying to do whatever we can. This is the first time John was acting like the owner he is tonight. You're doing great. You're doing great. All right. Keep it up. And that's exactly what Mama Maria needs. This looks awesome. It smells awesome. Yum. This is delicious. Let me know when that margarita is ready, please. I need that margarita. So, guys, how did everything go? The spaghetti and meatballs were They're delicious. Really awesome. Absolutely totally spectacular. Awesome. Thank you. Well, cheers to pizza. Uh, Congratulations. We'll definitely be coming here again. Great job. Well thank done. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good night, guys. John, listen, you are one hard-working, honest, Guy. Thank you. I feel I was living in a shell. I'm coming out of that shell. Kiss. That shell is broken. Kiss. And I've got to be honest with you. You hit it, man. You hit it right on the head. Here's my memories. Mom and Dad are here. Yeah, they're here. They're and here. so they are looking down. And they, right now, are proud. You no, have got proud. the door open. Thank Grab you. it. Just go forward. Don't I go will. backwards. No, no, no. I'm not going backwards. I refuse to go backwards. Kiss. One thing I remember my father was his leadership, and that's what I'm going to continue doing. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. I know what I need to do, and there's more to come of Mama Maria's in the future.
For the last 55 years, this restaurant has belonged to John's parents. And even after they sadly passed away, he remained a pizza maker. But tonight, he was an owner. This restaurant now belongs to John and John only. And I'm truly, and I mean truly rooting for this Brooklyn underdog. How much water can be put in one plant pot? Ah, shit. God bless pizzas. After Chef Ramsay left... Welcome to Mama Maria. John has kept his promise of running his business away from the pizza counter. I need a bowl of grated cheese, please. A bowl of grated cheese. Mama Maria's has already generated a ton of positive buzz from bloggers and websites. It's really good. Thank you. I hope from Chef Ramsay we've come a long way. And this 55-year-old restaurant is on its way back to being a fixture in Brooklyn once again. Beaver, Pennsylvania, an upper middle class suburban community located 28 miles outside of Pittsburgh and home to Levante's Italian restaurant, opened in 1998 by Dino Fratangeli. After graduating college, Dino wanted to open a restaurant. How is it here? It's good. And with his father, Tony, investing his life savings, Dino's dream came true. Are you starting to get orders? When we opened, there wasn't much down here, and the town had a need for uh, a restaurant. Cajun chicken and broccoli. And I was a little overwhelmed with how much business we had. The fun hasn't begun yet. So I asked my sister to come in and help me out. OK, there's eight of you. Seven. 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 At the time, I had a flower shop. I was a florist. But I felt like I needed to help Dino. So I sold my flower shop and came to work here at Levante's. Enjoy. We'll be right with you. Everything was going fine. And then, unfortunately, we got competition. That changed everything. How many tables do you each have? Two. That's it? Mm-hmm. People just aren't coming to Levante's anymore. The real reason the restaurant is failing is because of Tina and Dino. Janae, what's our special tonight? Pasta spinaci. <laughs> That's our special all the time. Dino has absolutely no clue what he's doing in the kitchen. I'm going to put it on top. Are you kidding? I'm going to let you do this. The quality of the food is gross. It's definitely chewy. They're like rubber. When are we opening, guys? Tina, I would replace her with a manager who knew what she was doing. Are you kidding me? She's a disaster. I can't um, figure it out. One of the most frustrating things is just the fact that Tina and Dino cannot function together. It's just so simple. Simple. A big sister doesn't like to listen to her little brother very often. Our communication's a one-way street. You've done nothing that I've asked you to do as a general manager. No, that's not true. He points the finger at me for everything. It's always my fault. Dino! Dino! All right, all right. Dino and my relationship got worse. And Dino walked away for about a year and a half and left the whole business on my shoulders. This is too hard in the middle. And then tried to come back. It just kept declining. Our situation's pretty desperate. Right now, we owe 1,200. Do they have a 10-day grace period? No. They're not even being patient anymore. I put so much money this, inside this restaurant. If this restaurant closes, I'll be at a quarter of a million dollars. Just don't know what happened. I feel really bad for Tony because I don't think that he really even knows like how bad it is. Tina and Dino are basically throwing his money away. This place is a disaster. Honestly, if Chef Ramsay was not coming, I would have given it six months to live and or just board it up. As Chef Ramsay makes the short drive in from the Pittsburgh airport, he takes one more look at the video message that convinced him to come to Levante's. I'm calling out for help. My brother and I have owned for 14 years. We have a lot of bitter arguments over this, and hopefully you can come help us to get our restaurant back. I really need your help. Wow. Hello. Hello, how are you? I know you, I recognize you, how are you? 
Nice to meet you. Likewise. Uh, good to see it's you. It's a pleasure. Um, thank you for that message. Um, I didn't realise things were that bad, but... Yes. Personally, how are you doing? I'm OK. OK. You sure? I'm ready for your help. OK. Um, where's brother? Where is he? Probably in the back. OK, let's sit down and have a, okay. a chat, shall we? Please. Are you making that a phone call? For Chef Ramsay was just my last hope. <laughs> I just really need the help. Hey, how are you? Dino. Dino, good to see you. Take a seat. Uh, right, good to see you both. Good, good to, see, to you. see you. Give me a little insights behind the scenes. When did you open? Uh, we opened in 1998. Right. I had uh, just graduated college and I was kind of trying to find my, my way in life. And mm -hmm. me and my father uh, kind of got together and he was my financial backer. So dad bought the ration for you? Yes. Wow. So you started the business together? Actually, he wanted to start the business and asked me to come along with him. Oh, At the so, time, I had a flower shop. So why would you leave the flower shop? I felt a, I needed to help, you know? I felt it was the right thing. Mm -hmm. So you've given up a lot to keep this business afloat? Yes. And where does your father sit in this? Throughout the years, he's put his money into it. How much longer can your father support it financially? I don't think Not anymore. Not much longer at all. Not much longer. No. What's the problem with the restaurant? He is. That's there insane. Was, no, that is insane. That's the truth. Who's in charge? Him. He says he is. Right. But I'm here more often than he oh, really? is. Uh, I wouldn't say that she's here more than me. Chef, I've been here double probably what she's been here. No. Who's you here? left me here. There's a reason why I left. Oh, you left the restaurant? I, I, I took my time away from the restaurant for a couple of years. A couple of years? The situation between me and her just started really dissolving. And I kind of decided to take a little hiatus. And why would you take time out? I left because I didn't want to lose my sister forever because I was getting to that point that I would hate her. But um, Tina, give you an insight to what happened when Dina left. What, what, what happened to the restaurants? I mean, I was here as much as I needed to be. How many hours a week? Can you answer that? When she says she was here Wait, all the time, well, it was 25 hours a week. No, I'm here. You're not here. When was the last night you worked? It doesn't matter. In the last I'm here two months. Nine, when was the last nine evening? in the morning till four in, in the afternoon. You're not here till four o'clock. Okay, can't you you're here till learn one in front of the house? I'm here every day. No, you're, you're not here every I'm here, day. I'm here Just every day. In the last six months, you've been last here every eight, day. Ten you months. Know? And, and, and I was here every day. I lived here for 10 years. You cannot open the restaurant without me. The truth, right? You probably have... could. I mean, I did in the beginning. I just haven't done it for several years. Chef, no. I've tried Chef, for 14 years. Chef, he stands years. back there in that doorway, mm -hmm. and he does this to me when I've been working and calling me at the same time. In the same building? In the same, right there. Like, walk out and talk to me. How's that me? crazy? I'm just trying to get a hold of you. Now, I'm dirty, and I don't like coming out here with dirty clothes you know, on and cooking clothes. I don't like my cooks to be out here. OK, so I'm going to run upstairs when I could just motion to you to come back here. That's just yeah. insanity. Like, and you hate me because of that? I, I don't you hate, hate that, you for that. that. That drives you crazy? There's a problem with something. Maybe someone's table. Maybe a, a question. Yeah, I just think I it's mean, annoying. Do you want me to, to scream it across the room? The Tina, can you come over here? No, don't I mean, scream. Seriously, you're upset at me because of that? I can't understand Look, this, why he won't walk in this dining room. We don't even argue because we don't talk long enough to argue. Because you're not here. Within minutes of arriving at Levante's, Chef Ramsay has witnessed how destructive this restaurant has been on this brother and sister relationship. Hey, Chef. Follow me, sir. Now it's time to find out if the food is suffering as well. How are you? I'm Ralphie. How are you? Good. I'm Sam. Nice Sam, to meet nice you. Nice to see you likewise. Good to see you. Good. A happy, smiley face for once. <laughs> I met that's the owners earlier, and they were down and in the dumps. Are they always like that? Yes, that's an always. OK, then. Let's order. OK. Got to go for the stuffed uh, banana peppers. Um, I've got to try that Italian stuffed filet. OK, how do you yeah. like it done? Medium rare, please. OK. Um, Carletta. Mm -hmm. It's our signature sauce. And who came up with that idea? Dino. Dino. Mm -hmm. It yeah, came awesome. to him in a dream. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Our claim to fame came in a dream from someone who knows nothing about food or how to prepare it. Flippin' heck, OK. <laughs> um, Got to go for the chicken carletta, because okay. that's the sauce that was dreamt of one night in his dream. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Absolutely. 
And it begins. Don't sweat the chef. Do what you guys normally do. What is that, olive oil? Yeah, but it doesn't taste yeah, like olive oil. Do you mind if I have a little taste? Go ahead. Oh, it's very watery. It tastes like frying oil. It does. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Is yes. Tina nearby? Yeah, absolutely. Please, thank you. Wow, that's dreadful. Tina, Chef Ramsay's asking for you at 43. Oh, uh, no. Tina's been such a hands-off manager for so many years now that she's become so blasé. Yes, sir. Um, and what is that olive oil there? Is that canola oil? No, it's... It's olive oil? Pomsol. Oh, 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 oh. Is that the... Is that what you're serving there? It's that mix. Look at that. Jeez, it smells off. Smell that? What's in there? I don't know. When was the last time they were cleaned? I don't know. You're the front of the house. What a mess. Is the bathroom nearby? I can just yes, clean, wash my hands. To the Please. right. Shit, what happened there? What's that? Tiramisu. Oh, my God. Are they done every day? Probably a couple weeks ago. What, no. is that a fake tiramisu? Like no, you... it's... That's a real no, tiramisu? No, Oh, come on. No, that's... So that's just sat there from fresh. And you said two weeks? No, probably three weeks ago. That is longer than three weeks. This stinks. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Sam. Yes? How long have these desserts been sat here? A couple of months. A couple of... A couple of months? A couple of months. You yeah. just told me three weeks. No, I would say under a month. It was a couple of months. <laughs> Do they stay out all night? Yeah. That is a fucking health hazard. Oh, my God. Shit, my boots. I, I can't. I can't do this. The chef's filet right here. OK. Here's our stuffed filet. This is the stuffed filet. Yes. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Diane. You're welcome. Wow. What a mess. I asked for mid-rare, but it's raw. It's like you've got to stick your knife in it to, to kill it. I mean, the thing's still fucking moving. Um, Sam, uh, I'm trying to cut into that. I asked for mid-rare, but it's, like, uh, it's raw. It's a little raw. Is that steak frozen? Probably. Could you just check with the chef, please? Yes. Was that steak frozen, he wants to know? I know. Was this frozen? Yeah. Yeah. That okay, well, he was. said it's raw. I don't know if I should laugh or cry. Which one? All those crumbs oh, under there. Why is everything so dirty here? There's crap everywhere. I mean, just crumbs and hairs and disgusting. Uh, Tina. Oh, how often is the restaurant cleaned? I know you've got we... your dates wrong with the dehydrated desserts. Uh, we do our own shop. cleaning. Wanna... You do your own cleaning. I, I appreciate that. That's not what I asked. How often is the restaurant cleaned? often um i can't answer you can't answer okay who knows the answer to how often the restaurant's cleaned if it's not you i should know Sorry. that you should know there we are you know dino always comes out smelling like a rose what's that noise like somebody's drilling the register jesus is it always like that? Yeah. That noisy? Yeah, the phone's worse. Jeez. Ah. Banana peppers. Thank you. Absolutely. What's that? Oh, Jesus. Way too much cheese. It's like congealed snot. Sam, is this what they'd normally be like? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Strange. Very, very strange. What do you think? By now, I'm confused. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen, you know, peppers, stuff like that. What's well, happening? Well, they're frozen. They're frozen. So when you put them in the microwave, and but then lift them up, all that stuff comes out. All that water comes out. Yeah. I feel like I'm eating donkey's cock. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Wow. Now we've gone from bad to bizarre. You know. What? You want to know what he said about these ones? What did he say? Feels like he's eating a donkey's pee pee. <laughs> because since he knows you froze them, all the crap comes out because there's all that water in there. This is starting to get absurd. Sam, be respectful. 
Be respectful. Dino, this is Chef's Chicken Carletta. All right, I'm taking the Carletta now. Looking good, looking good. Chicken Carletta Capellini. This is the, OK, that's, great. That's the dream sauce. This is the dream sauce. Yes. Mm. How do you think? What a mess. How much garlic did you put in there? Um, I have no idea. And the chicken, why is the chicken so hard? It's like no bullets. Idea. Wow, God help them. Thank you, Diane. You're welcome. Brought together in a dream. Unfortunately, he didn't realize at the time he was having a fucking nightmare. Oh, my gosh. Dino. What? He said, how much garlic do you really put in this? And I said, who knows? And then he said, the, could you get the chicken any drier? The chicken any drier. I disagree with what he had to say about my chicken Carletta. I prayed for months for guidance, and my Carletta sauce is inspired by God. Uh, come over, guys. And this is... Mike Marker. Mike? Yes, sir. Nate. Nate. Uh, I don't know where to start. I'm, I'm lost for words. But what I will say is I think this is the worst Italian food I've ever eaten. Where shall I start? The stuffed banana peppers. It was full of water, frozen, microwaved, and then some bizarre, weird canned sauce. The chicken carletta. Chicken was rubbery, shredded, chewed. You didn't like the sauce? It was gross. It was garlicky. It was just like something that shouldn't have been put together in the first place. Help me to understand the madness. I got inspired by mm -hmm. a higher power. A higher power? God. God. I mean that. God made the sauce. I mean, you can't all be there. Can you guys go back in the kitchen so I can yes, work sir. with the owners? Dina. Tina. Both of you come over. When you can't even keep the place clean, that sends the alarm bells ringing. But I think deep down inside, you don't care, and you've stopped caring. That's not true. Really? I do care. Dino, talk to me. I'm completely overwhelmed. Dino, who are you talking to? Any chance of looking no, them in the not... eyes? Do you have a pair of bollocks? I'm over here. I mean, I'm going to stand there, but just talk to me. Uh, what is the proper way to keep the front of the house of the restaurant clean? Oh, come on, Dino. Fucking hell. I'd... Aren't you embarrassed? Does your dad know that you're this bad? Take your father out of the equation, and you're fucked. We can't go on like this. We need help. I hope he's coming back. I don't think he is. <laughs> After a very frightening first few hours, Chef Ramsay tracks down the man responsible for funding Levante's. Tony, how are you? Good, Chef. Dino and Tina's father, Tony. I'm not for words. I walked in there, and the first thing that hit me was the animosity. And yeah. I'm nervous because I don't know if I can help because those two don't care. OK. But if it wasn't for your continued financial support, this business wouldn't survive. We were doing real good up to about four or five years ago. I, I kind of blame the economy more mm -hmm. than anything, you know? But it's not the economy that's affecting your restaurant now. That, that's, that's not the economy. Well, I, that's what they tell me anyway. Yeah. Maybe they're telling you that so you can keep funding it. Yeah, right, right. How much does the business owe you? Over, over 200,000. 200,000. Just down to nothing almost, you know? Must be heartbreaking. Yeah, I fight with my wife too, and she start crying, you know, stuff like that. She's kind of upset about it. She said, just close it up. Sure. And she's telling me, close up. I don't want to hear this no more, you know? I'm really sorry. I'm here for you. I'm going to get changed, and I'll be in there tonight. Thank you very A much, deal. Chef. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. All right, guys, you ready? All right, let's get this crap on the road. As Chef Ramsay's first observation of a dinner service begins... Zucchini parm and a baked rigatoni. He has made sure that he is not the only one watching Dino and Tina's performance. Tony, how are you? Their father, Tony, is in the kitchen for the first time in several months. So, this is the line, right? Yes. Yes, Chef. Uh, how old's that stove? Oh, it's like 50 years old, I'm assuming. The burners I have later are the only burners that work. These don't work at all. 
The ovens don't work? No. Are you kidding me? No. If you start me with that, what chance have you got? Dino, this slip is sold. There's that, D. Dino, what about my appetizers? Is that for me? Uh, no, it's not. Oh, my god. Dino, are you actually expediting? I'm expediting. All you're doing is just lifting food from that side of the kitchen and putting it to that side of the kitchen. But I thought you were expediting. I got to kind of ask Mike. He's got enough to do. Any of my food up? Uh, that's, well, hold on, hon. Hold on one second. Wow. That's yours, but I think these three are mine. Despite the chaos in the kitchen, the servers somehow managed to sort it out. The pizza here? And food is making its way out to the diners. Thank you. Unfortunately, the speed of service doesn't make up for the disappointing flavor. It's very chewy and gummy. It doesn't even look like meat. This is Alfredo sauce. Yes. Um, and it's kind of chunky, it looks like. If I could, if something I could something else instead. I'll give you a menu. Thank How's you. that? OK. Dino, um, they think the Alfredo's lumpy. What's wrong with it, Dino? I don't think he drained all of the. What is that, Alfredo? It's Alfredo. Um, that's a disgrace. OK, your chicken tastes like it's frozen and unfrozen. Oh, no. Can you please make me another one? Guys, can you please look at my fettuccine sauce? Look at that. Are you it looks serious? like curdled milk. Are you, are you kidding me? No care, nothing, guys. I mean, I just, no wonder the food's coming back. What in the hell? Is this the chicken? Yeah. Stop. Stop. Dino, urgently. That's the chicken we've been serving all night, yeah? Why is it sat in all that? Look how slimy it is. Oh, my god. How old is that? Oh, my god. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. Tony, two seconds. Tina, you're part of this. What in the fuck are we doing? How old is that? I don't know. Look at the color of the chicken. Green and stinking. Hold that. What's this? Hi. In what? We're serving that. Excuse me. Look at the way we work. What is this? What is this? Anybody? I have no idea. You've got no idea. And this? How old's this? Oh, my god. You disgusting pigs. Look at that. Yeah, it's fermented. Just, just, just smell that. Just smell that. Come on, please, you own it. Ladies, we've been serving that. See the mold around the side? Oh, my god. Oh, my god. I thought that was basil. Right. Oh, my god. No, that's not basil. I wish it was fucking basil. How long does a sauce sit in the fridge to get moldy around the top? Quite a, quite a long time. I didn't expect to see all this. They're not doing the job they're supposed to be doing. And these guys, they're going to have a rough time now. Does the town of Beaver deserve this? Absolutely not. You should be ashamed. Ashamed. Now, walk out there and apologize to your guests and try and do something you've never done in 14 years. Fucking work together. I'm not going out there. Excuse me. Um, we we appreciate you guys coming out here and and um, trying out our, our, our restaurant tonight. But uh, we won't be having any more service. Uh, Chef Ramsay has shut us down for the evening. Fucking hell! Oh, guys, guys. Thank you. Dino, you're telling them that I'm shutting it down. I, I was just. I heard you. I was standing behind the door. Chef Ramsay did not shut this down. I stopped the owners from serving ship food. But I am not going to continue that. Because you don't realize right now, young man, how bad you've become. So I'm not shutting it down. I'm just stopping you looking more stupid. Did you honestly want to continue serving? So you want to continue? You're... You want to you wanna continue serving? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, can I just have your attention for 30 seconds? Oh, gosh, he has it in his hand. Oh, my God. After Chef Ramsay discovered rotten chicken. Look how slimy it is. And moldy sauce. You disgusting pigs. 
Dino and Tina blame the shutdown of the restaurant on... Chef Ramsay has shut us down. Dino, you're telling them that I'm shutting it down. And now Chef Ramsay is determined to give a more accurate explanation. Ladies and gentlemen, can I just have your attention for 30 seconds? First of all, my apologies, but I'm not going to BS anybody. I am not shutting this restaurant down. I am stopping the owners serving this disgusting mess from chicken that's already slimed off, gone, to disgusting basil that was never fresh, to a tomato sauce that's actually caked in mold. I am not going to sit here and play party to that. I'm embarrassed. And whilst I am totally appreciative for you leaving your homes to come here tonight for dinner, I've got too much respect for you and too much respect for the industry. I am not going to be part of this any longer. My sincere apologies. OK, well, that was embarrassing. Well, what do we do? I have to comp everything. I can't believe it. I'm very, very pissed off right now. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. No wonder they complain out there. Now I know exactly why this place wasn't making any money. I'm embarrassed. I'm sorry. Absolutely embarrassed. Uh, listen, I am so freaking sorry. Let me tell you. But those two need to know how bad they've become. I'm not going to continue serving food like that. I uh, don't blame I'm, you. I'm, I'm I don't sorry. want people to eat it. I didn't come here for that. No. I wouldn't want to eat that shit either, you know? I see what's going on, and I'm sick of it. These kids got a lot of work to do. They've given up. I worked my ass off all my life. Good job. Hey, listen, I'm here for you. I'm going to do everything I can to get this business turned around. But I need you, OK? You got me. I'm going to get involved. I'm not going to make it easy for nobody. OK. Thank you very much. While Chef Ramsay is disappointed with Dino and Tina, he remains in the town of Beaver to support Tony. I turn. Who has been blindsided by his children's lack of commitment. OK, this is going to be the most important meeting with your son and daughter since you've opened that business. They need to fight for the jobs and they need to understand you are the boss. Yeah? You ready? Good. Tough love. My kids better change. I will close the restaurant and they're both going to be out. Truthfully? I don't think both of you know how easy you've had it. You're fighting against each other, as opposed to fighting for the future of the business. I gave you a chance, both of you. You guys never did what you're supposed to do, you know? Both of you have to stop arguing. Otherwise, you're not going to get nothing out of that business. I'll sell the building, I'll close it up, and you are not going to get nothing out of it. I got to be dead for you to get anything. Well, Dad, I'm sorry for letting you down. And I promise, and I will make you proud. Why don't I'll, you guys work hard? I will work and do whatever necessary to get a restaurant going again. I, I, I First, let me just apologize, Dad, for everything that we've been through for the last couple of years. I thought I knew what problems we had, and I had no idea that I didn't know. And uh, if you give me another opportunity, I promise you from the bottom of my heart that I am 100% committed. Well, you show me then. I'm giving you guys a chance. You guys better work together. You now roll up your sleeves more than ever before, because tomorrow we are relaunching your father's restaurant. And I want to see both of you ready to work, my team, alongside the research that I've been doing, we've been looking at what's not available in Beaver County. And based on that research, let me tell you, Levantis needs a dramatic change. Levantis is going to become an American bistro. I'll see you bright and early in the morning. Thank you, Chef. See you in the Thank morning. You.
Thank you so much. See you in the morning. Thank Get ready for change. Thank you, Chef. I agree with Chef Ramsey. Things needed to change, and uh, I think all of us are extremely excited about the new Levante's Bistro. Faced with a restaurant that hasn't been touched in 15 years, Chef Ramsey and his team have their hands full as they transform Levante's from an Italian restaurant into a modern American bistro. Right, good morning. Good morning, Chef. How are we? Good. 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 We're good. Are you ready to see a stunning new restaurant? Yes. Yes, Chef. OK, take off your blindfolds. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Holy wow. mackerel. Welcome to the new Levantes, your American bistro. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's awesome. Oh, wow. Gone are those dark and dreary walls. Take a look how new and modern, how appealing it is. This is awesome. We got rid of those horrendous, filthy booths, replaced them with new chairs, new tabletops, and a brand new central seating area. Beautiful, thank you so much. I haven't smiled in here for a long time and I can't seem to stop. I'm so happy. Thank you so much, Chef. Now, one more thing. During my first meal, I couldn't even concentrate on my food. It sounded like a construction site with this thing hammering around. <laughs> Shaking away. So, I'd like to introduce you to a stunning oh POS system. Oh my god! Yay, that's so cool. From POS, Lavu, and Sefa Hardware. It is easy to use, it's wireless, and it can be operated anywhere in this building. Get out. This is the cutting edge of POS systems. It will truly help in terms of purchasing, your fixed costs, and your profits. That's cool. Oh, yes. That's cool. We're going to have a new beginner, and it's, this, is, this is just awesome. I told you, day one, that I'm here to support you. So I have found you two consultants, and they run two very successful restaurants. One of them is listed in the top 25 restaurants in Pittsburgh, Avenue B. I'd like to introduce you to Chef Chris Bonvilli and his wife, General Manager Jen Bonvilli. Chris, how are you, sir? I'm doing well. Good to see you. Are you well? Yep, I am. Jen, how are you, my darling? Welcome. Good to see you. Chris is going to orchestrate with a kitchen, and Jen is going to help set up the dining room. We're happy to come in and just do what we do and make awesome food. So that's what we're Brilliant. all about. They are here on a consultant basis. So you need to listen and take that level of expertise and put it into this restaurant and pass that knowledge down to your team. Tony, Dino, Tina, I've got one more little surprise for you guys. Come with me. Thank you. Welcome to your new kitchen. Wow. Oh, wow. yes. Look at this space. First of all, when I arrived, this kitchen was so dilapidated, I wouldn't even attempt to cook anything from there, let me tell you. So, I made some rather urgent calls to my friends at Cully Quip, and I asked them to put together a line of brand new equipment. Let's start off with an amazing, energy efficient Falcon six burner range. Top of the line. Wow. When I say top of the range, I'm talking top of the range. It has a griddle top. Underneath that, it has a broiler. Underneath that, it has two ovens. Next to that, you've got a two-basket fryer from Pitco. Opposite that, an amazing brand new steam table from Eagle Group. And then this, for me, is the Rolls-Royce, a state-of-the-art Blodgett brushed stainless steel convection oven. This Blodgett holds five baking trays. It's amazing, chef. You now have all the tools to run this as a successful restaurant, let me tell you. There's no excuse. No excuse. Now that Levante's has been converted into a contemporary American bistro... Excellent. Come through, please. Chef Ramsay continues his plan by introducing a brand new menu to match. We're cooking American classics. Looks good. Looks beautiful. <laughs> Let's start off with the corn bisque. Sweet corn, done beautifully, seasoned, and served with little fritters. Awesome. Next to that, we've got mussels, done with pancetta, shallots, garlic, white wine, butter. Classic. Entrees, starting off with a braised lamb shank, braised with vegetables, red wine, and a really nice lamb stock. And that will just fall off the bone. Wow. Yeah? It's tremendous. And then finally, pan-seared salmon with barley, salad, braised fennel, and pancetta with fresh herbs. Nobody has a menu like this locally. Now you can stand out from the competition. I think everything looks so good here. Good. Anybody hungry? Yeah. Yes. Good. Get some knife and forks. Dig in. Oh, my God. That is good. It is delicious, amazing food. 
Amazing. I think we can compete now. <laughs> Amazing. I want to eat it all. I just love it. It's good. It's relaunch night at Levante's, but before they open for business, Tony has a little business of his own. Tonight, you gotta promise me that you guys gonna work hard and make this happen. Entire giving it to you guys. Giving you, giving you. You, gonna, you guys gonna give back to me. Believe me, I understand you don't have to tell me again, Dad. Committed, I promise. They show to me, because I'll tell you what, if you guys don't you screw up, this is gonna be the end. You understand? I got it. We're on it. So much pressure this evening. But I meant what I said. I'm going to work hard and earn his trust back. I'm going to be watching you guys. With the pressure clearly on, Levante's opens its doors to the town of Beaver, Pennsylvania, for the first time as an American bistro. How different it looks. It's Good evening, folks. Welcome. Follow me, please. I have the New York strip. Wow. That's really high tech. High five, Heck yeah. <laughs> we aren't playing around anymore. With Chris guiding Dino in the kitchen. Crab cake dip. Crab is in our hands right now, yeah. selling you two dip. And Jen working with Tina in the dining room. You could always cap the end of that four top. The relaunch is off to a smooth start. Wow. I can't believe this is safe place. <laughs> What's this? I'm confused. I don't have the slip. Checks on the printer, chef. Check on the printer. Got a stack of checks up there. Yeah, I know. I gotta get. I got. I got. Have a stack right here. I have to call right now. Calling to lamb salmon. Table number, please. Sorry, table number fifty-one. Thank you. Dino is pretty rough at running the pass. Uh, he's pretty timid. Uh, I think he's not so sure of himself. He's having a hard time kind of grabbing the reins and, and getting after it. Come on, Dino, get on top of it. Got to work three or four tables at once. Yeah. You're getting confused with the tickets. Look at me. Yeah. You're falling behind. Get on top of it, please. We're in the shit now. Let's go. Perfect. One hour and counting. Can I get a time on table one, please? 71 appetizer. How much longer for table three? They've been waiting a really long time. Did I already give that to you? Are you kidding me? Dino needs to get his stuff together, or else we're going to be an embarrassment once again to the entire community. Yeah, no, we're in the shit now. Let's go. I got this table 43 been waiting here over an hour for food. 43. Hey, Dino, 43. What's going on? They've been here for an hour. Table 43. I feel like we we sold that. I really hope that Dino catches on quick. Because if you screw up the first time, I'll give you the second chance. You screw up the second chance, you're done with me. OK, look, stop, Dino. Fire, Caesar. Stop. 43 has not gone out. Oh, guys. It's an hour into the relaunch of Levante's and Dino has lost control of the kitchen. Table 43, I feel like we sold that. Stop, Dino. Fire, Caesar. Stop. 43 has not gone out. Dino, okay. jump the tickets, OK? Jump the tickets. What? We've got to handle that one first. Chris, can you stop what you're doing? For five minutes, join it by the sides. Dino, wake up a little bit. You need to own it. Let's go. So I'm waiting on a burger medium to sell. Then my next order, I'm looking for salmon midwell, burger midwell. I realize tonight how much I do need Chris's help. I have uh, a mountain of learning ahead of me. It's just going to take a little bit of time for me. Table three, yes, burger. Hallelujah. Check sold. A burger. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll come back and check on you. Enjoy. Firing. Table four, muscles, butcher's board. Dino has a, a ton to learn at this point, but he has an awesome opportunity here, and he's the one that has to, to make it happen. Hey! So that's it. This is all sold. We'll be back. Yes, no. We'll be here. <laughs> well done. Levante's is back on the map. Big Thank time, you, yes? Chef. This gorgeous town loved the American Bistro. Did you hear the feedback from the food? I didn't have a single complaint tonight. Tina? Did a great job. Sure. Dino, tonight you had a first grasp of what it's really like running the fort. Yeah, I did. And tonight, Chris and Jen ran your restaurants. You've got to stick with them. You've got to listen to them. A big thank you to them both, because I thought you did an amazing job. Thank you very much. Well done. Good night, guys. Uh, good job. Tony, two minutes. Listen, that was a tough day. 
I had such a good time. You did? Yes. Everybody loved it. And it's good to see you smiling. <laughs> <laughs> you have a town now that is in love with your Eshma again. You can walk out those doors and hold your head up high. I can't thank you enough. You're a special father, let me tell you. There's not many about. Take care, Captain. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you. Love to the family. OK. I'm going to listen to you. Good night. Good night. Take care. <sighs> when I came to Beaver, Pennsylvania, I had no idea that this would be one of the biggest kitchen nightmare transformations ever. But there are still two very big question marks remain. One's Dino, and the second one's Tina. Will they finally step up and satisfy not just their father, but their customers too? This is a very close-knit town, and I guess we'll just have to leave it to Beaver. Wow. In the weeks that followed, and table one, Janae. Good evening. Hi. How you doing? Chris and Jen continued their training of Dino and Tina. They need to see you hustling, too. They're going to hustle as much as you hustle. And with brother and sister working well together. How's everything going? It's going OK. I'm just coming to check on you. Tony can rest a bit easier, knowing that his children are in control and that the future of Levante's looks bright. All right, let's do it.